Hey everybody, Function X here. Today we're going to look at extreme reactors and do a little bit of an advanced math to find the de facto best reactor and best turbine to run uh, because there's a lot of questions, especially as I'm playing the Seopolis 2 mod pack about what size reactor should I build, what size turbine should I build, and a lot of it's just guesswork. People are like, oh, 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine, or 255 by 255 go with the biggest uh, i'm here to tell you that's not true um bigger is not always better so we're going to start with a little bit basic we're going to build up and by the end we're going to have an answer for everybody on the discord about what you should build now i should just say that first off that this pack i'm running is seopolis 2 which does have a, some slight tweaks to the base extreme reactor configs um, so the numbers that i'm going to show you now might not translate directly if you're playing a different pack. However, the math and how you calculate the right things and the best size to build is going to remain true no matter what. You just won't, might not see the exact number of RF per tick values that I'm seeing. Okay, so let's talk. Here's a basic reactor. This is the smallest one you can build, a three by three by three. It's got input, it's got output, it's got a power tap, and it's got a controller, all right? And it's got one single fuel rod with a, a control rod on top. This thing, turn it on, makes pretty decent, right? Uh, actually, I don't I think it'll make more if we, I don't know why it's not exporting. Oh well. Um, oh, it, it only export when it gets a full bucket, sorry. All right, it's making 7,000 RF. Pretty decent for a, a you know, few box of steel and iron, right? Okay, uh, so then it's like, well, how do we know how many fuel rods we should use and how does that translate to RF, right? So this is the five by five and this is the biggest you can make with the basic casings, right? And this just has one set of fuel rods in the middle uh, and this everything else is the same. This one produces 22,000 RF or FE. <laughs> you can go either way per tick. And I wanna say this thing looks hot. These will not explode, at least in, uh, February of 2023, <laughs> extreme reactors do not explode. So you can you can, you don't need any cooling, right? Um, and so if we look, is there any ratio to, you know, this has, we can see Ray, where is it, right here. One fuel rod is making 7,000. Three fuel rods is making 21,000. You can see there's an exact multiplier, uh, assuming heat is all the same of 7,000 per fuel rod, all right? So let's add more. This is now 15 fuel rods, all right? 15 times seven, here I've got a calculator here, 15 times seven is 105. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. Um, and that's because the temperature and the casings are different uh, than here. You can see here, this casing was really low. Um, as we add more and more fuel rods, there's less ability for the heat to transfer. And so you actually, you actually get more, um, right? Cause we, we should expect, uh, let's see if we do get, we're getting 157 to about 15. So now we're getting 10 K RF pure fuel rod. So it's better to actually put more fuel rods in your reactor, try and fill them up. Right? So let's skip over this one and let's go all the way to this one, which is completely full. This is now uh 27 fuel rods uh but we've lost something right now we're only at 222 uh 222 divided by 27 now we're only get 6000 okay so now we're even worse off so you can't just you want to put as many fuel rods in place but you can't spam them too much or then you get worse results so the best uh then result is the checkerboard um so you put fuel rods in the corners and, and you just make a checkerboard. And that's what this one was. This is the best um, layout for fuel rods. We get the most bang for your buck per your uh, uranium or yellow or yet eulorium that you put inside, all right? So we've kind of established that as a rule now. You should build, whatever size you build, you should build a checkerboard. Uh, now the question is, do we cool it, all right? So this one has no cooling at all. And remember, we were getting about 10,000 RF or FE per uh, fuel rod in here, all right? This one's the exact same layout, but it has diamond blocks in here. And you can put other blocks that uh, can cool. If you hit F3H, so the advanced tooltips are shown, and then you go type block of, 
you can see that uh, diamond works, gold works, copper, iron. Uh, you can put water in there. I, actually, I'm not sure if liquid cooling works anymore, but um, you can see enderium works. And so you can put whatever you have a lot of. And different blocks are going to give you different results, and I didn't really want to test that too much. But uh, here's diamond. Let's make a day as well. Um, so here is the exact same setup with diamond in here. This one producing 158. This one producing 188. So we got even better. Now we're getting, uh, let's see, 188 divided by, how many is this, 15? We're getting 12.5 thousand Fe per tick uh, per fuel rod. So we should definitely cool it. So now we've got two rules. We should make a checkerboard and we should cool it with some kind of block. Um, maybe there's better blocks, but diamond is plenty fine, right? Uh, so you have diamonds. If you don't have diamonds, use gold or use uh, whatever you have. Okay, um, so how is this one different? I don't remember how I made this one different. <laughs> there was a reason for making that one, but I don't remember why. 188, 15. There's something different about this one. I don't know what it is. Anyway. Skip over that one. Um, I was trying to show the difference in size. So if we go from a five by five to now a seven by seven, is it is it still giving us that same ratio? Remember this one. I guess we'll use these values: one seventy six divided by fifteen. It's eleven point seven. All right. If we go up to a seven by seven now, this one's at four forty four, and divide that by 39 so met much more fuel rods and you get 11.3 um, So it's about the same the reason it's less is because you're you, you're cooling less of the fuel rod uh, This one's only touching two, but this one's touching three too. So whereas this one You have the same corners and that one's touching all four. There's more touching three basically um, So you get a little bit less efficient per fuel rod. All right um, now if we also look at these, this one is consuming 0.11 and this one is consuming 0.26. So it's, it's even, it's more than double, uh, and the output is more than double too, right? So it's, you know, you're getting less efficient, but you know, it's maybe better per space. If you really need more RF, build bigger, um, rather than build a bunch of little ones, you're better off building bigger ones. All right. So, uh, so then... If we look at this, you can see that, you know, we've got a five by five allows us to have, um, what, 13 fuel rods per level. Level. Uh, this one would, a uh, seven by seven is going to allow us to have 25 per level. And if all, this is 11 by 11, it's going to have nine, 18, 27, 36, 41. All right. So we can think, okay, if I'm getting, how many per fuel rod again on this guy? Um, this was 11.3, right, per fuel rod? Yeah, 39 fuel rods, I just wanna make sure, yeah. Okay, this was 11.4 thousand Fe per tick per fuel rod. And now let's say we wanted to make a million, all right? So if we type in a million RF per tick, uh, and we divide that by 11.3, we need 88 uh, fuel rods to make that. All right, so if we do this one, um, where we could only hold 13, <laughs> you're gonna see to get a million RF, it's gonna get really tall. Uh, what's 88 divided by 13? 6.7, so it's gonna be seven levels tall just to get your million RF or tick. This one where we can hold 25, uh, you can see that's pretty easy to know that we're going to need four levels to get above 88. And then this one, where we can hold 41, eh, we could almost get to a million if we go two levels. And that I just wanted to prove that by doing a two-level one. You can see that we make almost a million Fe per tick. We're just a little bit short, and that's what we'd expect. So if you have a target value in mind, you know we want to use checkerboard, we know we want to use cooling, then you can divide by the number of 
uh, blocks per, you know, at 11.7 or whatever, and figure out how tall you need to make it to get the exact value you want. Okay, so that's basically calculating uh, stuff for reactors. And these are passive reactors. Remember, they are being passively cooled by blocks inside them. We're not pumping anything in. Uh, and I do want to make note, there is a block. Uh, when you look up um, a reactor in here, specifically reinforced, there are blocks called active for generating power taps and passive for generating taps and active fluid ports and passive fluid ports. That has nothing to do with a passive reactor and an actively cooled reactor. What these mean is, does this block interact with a pipe or a chest, a chest next to it? If it's passive, you've got to use some kind of pipe or, or hopper, something that pulls it out, okay? So it's not just gonna push it out. If it's an active block, it will actively pull or push. Um, so in most cases, you're gonna to wanna to use the active block so that if you put a, a chest there, it's gonna pull the value in. Um, so I've got this one here, which is the access port, and there's not a active or passive version of this. You actually have to pipe in. But on the back, I've got a power tap and I'm using the active kind, so it automatically pushes power into this block. So that's a different from there. All right, let's get into turbines. That's probably what you came for. No, don't make it rain, I just make it daytime. So I've got all of these three, well, I got a few of them copied over here. And to convert them from a passive cooled reactor to an active cooled reactor, you only have to add one block and that's this fluid port block. Um, and that is where you're gonna provide your coolant. And we're just gonna use water today, that works perfectly fine. Um, and so that will change the interface and instead of having an RF storage here, it will have water input and steam output, okay? Um, so if I get rid of this trash can, you can see the steam forwards here. And as soon as you maximize this port here, it then produces only one millibucket per tick of steam, but still consumes all of your or your uranium or whatever you're putting in here. So don't do it. <laughs> don't let your steam ever backlog in here. Um, and I'm just putting a fluid trash can here to make sure it gets out just so we can see the full value. Um, but it means whatever steam you are creating, you need to make turbines to use all of that steam or you are wasting uh, your stuff. And if, and if you don't wanna waste it, there's a trick and that is to come up to these uh, control rods and insert them a little bit. So as you insert them, and we can hit change all, and that will insert all nine here, right? There's nine here. Um, that will then lower how much vapor it's creating. And so you can lower that down all the way until you're using just as the same amount as you're consuming in your turbine, all right? So that is one trick you can do so you're not wasting all that. But I wanna set this back to zero so we can get full values. Okay, so this was the one, let's go over to this one first, because this uh, this is the one that is the five by five uh, checkerboard pattern with the best layout, where this is the one that's gonna run a little bit hotter, because I wanna determine, does heat have anything to do with steam? You'd think it would, but it doesn't. <laughs> this is a, um, well actually, okay, it does a little bit. This is a, uh, that exact one over there that produces 177,000 RF per tick. It is producing 2.9 buckets of steam per tick. All right. If we come over here, oh, and the temperature is about 430. Over here, temperature is much higher, almost triple. Uh, but it's only producing double the steam, 4.3. And remember, this one produced 208K of RF, so it wasn't too much more. And if we wanna deal with percentages, we can just take 208, oops, let me, 208 divided, I've got my calculator out here, but it's not working very well. 208 divided by, oh my gosh, clear. <laughs> well, let's try one more time. Okay, so this is 17.5% more RF. Um, and if we take the buckets, this is 2.88, this is 4.32, and it's 1.5. So 
So it's actually producing more steam <laughs> per per um, RF, right? So there's not a one-to-one -one calculation that you can do from how much steam you'll get based on how much RF you're generating um, in different reactors. Um, so that's one thing to note is you can't just figure out how much steam based on the RF. Uh, it also matters how much we're burning right now. This is burning 143 and this is burning 0.84, so less than half. And, and that's why it's, this is more of the calculation you get is how much you're burning is more, more related to how much steam you're getting. Um, so the only reason you probably want to go with this reactor if you're going to move on to turbines is the recipe for turbines turbines oh let me actually do it in here let me get to a different tab so ji will actually let me type into it turbines take cyanite a lot of it right you're going to need hundreds and hundreds of this block meaning you're going to need four times that many cyanite and if you're going to go into three reinforced it's double that much because you're going to take the regular so it's eight cyanide per block um, so you want to burn through as much uranium or eulorium as you can as fast as you can um, so that you can get as much cyanide as, as, as possible and I should probably do that so that actually is ejecting it so I think we're getting a little bit off numbers because it wasn't completely full um, why is it raining again once it starts raining it just keeps raining every night okay um so yeah so if you want to get a lot more cyanide burn through as much as you can right um you're not really caring about rf per tick at that point you're just saying how much cyanide or yellowium can i process now in ocean block it doesn't matter because cyanide has an agricultural mystical agricultural seed that we can then use to produce infinite amount of cyanide so we don't care um but in another world, maybe you want to build a very inefficient reactor just to get the cyanide. Okay. Um, so that's the difference between those two. Now, as we get bigger, this one was producing 444,000 RF per tick. It's producing 10 buckets. And what's that ratio? Let's see. 444 divided by 10 point. Well, it's hovering, but it's kind of around 10.5. Um, that is 42.3 is this ratio of RF down to buckets. Whereas this one, again, it was, let me get 177 divided by 2.8, maybe 2.85, and that's 62. Um, so you're getting a lot a lot worse actually you're better to build a bigger reactor uh, for the steam and you could get efficiency and all that kind of stuff but i don't want to get too much into being efficient i'm assuming people that are building reactors like this have a good supply of uranium or lorium and don't really care that it's burning a little bit better but <laughs> the more important thing with turbines is how much steam you're generating because you need to match that with your turbines to be efficient and then this one here, this was the one that almost was a million, and it's getting 22 buckets. All right. So that's how it translates from a reactor over to a, or a passive reactor to an actively cooled reactor. Let's get into turbines. That's what you're here for, right? Yeah. Okay. This is a basic turbine. Big as it, or small as it can be, five by five by five, big as it can be. There's This is the size you make with a basic, I think. You might be able to make it bigger. Um, and I've got an infinite steam amount coming in here, so we're not really caring about how much steam. And let's look at some of the values here. Uh, we've got our steam coming in and our water going out. Now, it doesn't matter if there's extra water. I don't know where the water goes, but this thing still runs fine, okay? Um, so you don't have to vent this in. So if you have an infinite source of water, like a creative tank or a sink or something that's bringing in water, and you don't really care about this water and recycling it, just let the let it sit in the turbine. You don't really care, right? Cool. Um, now, if we hover over this, it says this rotors perform best at 900 or 1800. Uh, well, the basic rotors only can go to 900. If you're trying to get them faster, they can. They're just going to fail. 
Um, and I'm not sure what happens when you fail catastrophically. Maybe we'll try that at the end of the episode here and see what happens. Um, but to get this target speed, you're going to change your flow rate. That's the only thing that matters uh, once you've built it. Now, there's different ways you can configure it to change the, the, the speed. But once you've got this um, thing built, you should adjust your flow rate until this is as close to 900 as you can. You can see I've got a little bit high, so I probably want to bring it down. Um, but I think this one is kind of jumpy where it's going to go below 900. Either way. This one's producing 41,000 FE per tick at a with only 126 millibuckets of steam. Now, do you remember this one over here uh, was making, let's go back to this one, 2.8 buckets. So that one little reactor could run, what, 20 of these? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, like 15 of these. And so you can easily see that this gives a lot more our, our power for the amount of eulorium or uranium that you're putting into it. However, it's more expensive material-wise, right? Because you've now got to build a ton of these uh, to get that extra power. Um, but it's a, it is a good return, right? If you have the materials to build this, it's much better, better to go with a turbine than it is to go with the reactor. Um, now, I believe Ocean Block has the multiplier set at five over the default. So this would probably only produce 8,000. And so even with 10 of them, it might not be even matching what that is. So make sure you're checking the numbers based on your PAX config um, to see. But anyway, so that's the basic controller and how you set it exactly at 900 or close enough to it, okay? So um, in here, we've got eight fan blades. Um, and that is gonna tell us when we hover over this one that we're 100%. Based on our um, flow rate and the basic blades taking 15 millibuckets of that, it says, well, you need eight, and we've got eight. So our rotor efficiency is at 100%, that we're capturing all of the steam. If this is anything below 100%, it's actually meaning you're wasting steam. So you're using steam to speed it up to 900, but it's not actually capturing all of that steam that you're using. Um, so try and get your rotor efficiency at 100. And then the other thing we have is these coils. Now you can use, again, if you look at block of, that'll tell you if it can be used in a turbine. Um, so gold is one, copper, netherite. You cannot use diamond and emerald in the turbine. It has to be a metallic substance. Um, so I've just got three comparisons here. This is gold and you can see, oh my gosh, turn off rain. Um, this one is using 126 to generate 40, 41 and a half. This one is using 130 to generate 54. So the netherite is using just a little bit more steam, not much, and getting a lot more RF, right? So if the, use the best blocks that you can. And what is the best block? I'm not 100% sure, but someone in the Discord suggested Enderium, and this one is like, blow my mind better. 553, so it's taking a lot more uh, millibuckets to speed this thing up. Right now, uh, 54 divided by 130, it's taking four and a half percent or four and a half times more steam. Uh, and actually, maybe it's not as good because it's producing not four and a half times as much. Oh, well, here's the problem we're not at rotor efficiency. If we wanted to use Enderium, We've got to use, because we're using this much flow, we need much more rotors, and then we'd use a lot more FE. So we'd need to make this guy bigger, all right? Um, so that's kind of the thing, is like at 900, how much flow do you need? Is that flow, based on that flow, how many rotors you need? And it's kind of backwards, right? You have to calculate the flow to rate, <laughs> and then get the number of rotors, and then rebuild the whole thing, and then it might change. Um, but that's just based on, we're only looking at the different types of metals there. And you can see Enderium is a lot better. All right, then comparing the base. Oh, that's what the difference between those two was. Let's go back to this really quick. This is a five by five basic making 
222. This is a 5x5 five five reinforced. You want 176. So for the same size, the basic's better. Never build a 5x5 five five reinforced. If you're going to build 5x5, five five, go with basic. But as soon as you need to get bigger than basic, since it won't let you go above, then you go to reinforced. Okay. Uh, and the same thing applies here. Um, this one is a 5x5 five five exactly the same with reinforced. This one is producing 124. This one is producing 125. But it's consuming more, 217, right? No, it's consuming half. Okay, so the reinforced ones are actually maybe good to go with because they consume a lot less steam for the same amount. And mostly because the rotors are able to harness 25 millibuckets of steam um, instead of uh, 15, right? So you get much better rotor efficiency. So this one only needed eight. The other one said, oh, I need like 16. But anyway, and it's better bearings. So uh, about the same amount of power, half the, half the flow. Okay. So the other thing is the maximum flow rate of a basic is one bucket. The maximum flow rate of a reinforced is two buckets. Cool. Um, so the math we then want to do there is, well, how many rotor blades do I need? Well, if you're going to want to keep this as most efficient, you want to be able to build as few turbines as possible, right? Because there's all the blocks you have to build every time you build a second one or third one, fourth one. So we want to tr get in as much steam as possible. We want all two buckets of steam uh, and we want that to be all captured. So two buckets divided by 25 millibuckets is 40 blades. So all of our rotors uh, that we, anytime you ever build should have 40 blades. 80 blades, wait, hold on. <laughs> I just did math wrong. Two buckets um, divided by 25 is 80. It was one bucket, right? So it's 80 rotor blades that you want, okay? So never build another reinforced rotor without 80 blades. It's different for basic, but with a reinforced, you want 80 blades. So if we have a five by five uh, shape, we can only put four per level. So we need to go 20 levels tall and ignore that these are basic blades. I just was building them real quick to show you the height, 20 levels. <laughs> if we're in a seven by seven, we can hold eight. And so we only have to go 10 levels, okay? If we're in a nine by nine, we can hold 12. And so uh, we get a little bit, a few too many um, cause we're going to go seven levels up and seven times 12 is 84. So we've got four extra, so we could just trim the four off, but it looks better. Just put four extra blades on there. Um, but you can see that's much shorter. You only need seven levels. And then if we go into 11 by 11, we can add 16. And so we need five levels. And again, we're going to have a few extra, but that gives us at least the 80 that we need. All right. So if you look at these, I can know like what looks the most efficient and I think the seven by seven does. You just don't have a lot of wasted space and it's also not super tall. This is kind of the average. So I'm gonna hypothesize that a seven by seven is a good one and then we'll try and prove it, okay? Um, again, it's raining. Let's go over here and do some seven by seven examples. Here's a first one. This has got all 80 blades and we're putting uh, eight and six, this is 16 in dirium here. And I wanted to show you the, uh, the difference between running at 900 versus running at 1800, because the, the reinforced ones can run faster. Uh, this is one running 900, producing 252,000 FE per tick at 434 flow. Now, if we go the exact same uh, rotor, which is this one over here, or turbine, um, at 1800, it's 869 flow to get that 1800 and it's 512. So you can see, if we compare 869 and 512 to this one, 869 is double this, 512 is double this. So it's the same, 900 and 1800, they're both equal. So whatever you can target, but based on those is better. Um, if you're, you know, based on your flow. You can see to get to 1800, I have to put more flow, but maybe that's good because if my reactor is producing more steam, I'm wasting it. So I might as well get a reactor or a turbine that, that spins faster um, to get that double RF with double the flow. 
Now, if we go anywhere in between these, it's going to produce somewhere, you know, between that RF, but it's not going to be as efficient. So you're going to try and run these at your 900 or 1800. Okay, so that's with only, um, what, what do I say, 16 blocks? Now here, you can put these wherever you want around the shaft, right? So this one is using a 5x5, five five, which is 24 with a hole in the middle. So there's um, 25 with a hole in the middle, so it's 24. So two rows of that is 48 blocks. Now with 48 blocks of Enderium, I can't get this thing up to 1800. It won't let me. I'm taking, I've got too much drag on the system. So it's producing a lot of RF, but it's very inefficient because I can't get it there. So we need to find a happy medium of the number of Enderium blocks that will let us spin at 1800. And it's somewhere we can see between 16 and uh, 48. Because 16, we're using not all over flow. At 48, we're using all our flow, but we can't speed it fast enough. So I'll save you the calculations, but the exact number that you need for this setup in this configuration is 37. At 37 blocks of Enderium, you'll use your entire flow rate and be spinning right at 1800. And this produces 1 1.2 million Fe per tick in Ocean Block, uh, or Oceanopolis, sorry. <laughs> um, so that is our target uh, thing. 80 blades, 37 blocks of Enderium. Okay, and two buckets of steam. Um, so if we go all the way back to this reactor right here, which we said was a pretty distant one, this is a seven by seven, right? And it's producing, it would have produced 440K. It's doing a little over 10 buckets. So we could build five turbines and have leftover steam, you know? And that, oh well, a little bit goes to waste. Maybe we put the control rods in so this makes exactly 10 buckets, but whatever. So we're making five turb, we can power five turbines with this one reactor. That was 444K FE. But if we make five turbines running at 1.2, you can see we're making 6 million FE per tick. Um, so we've jumped you know, magnitudes better uh, by building a lot of turbines. Now, that doesn't come free. We've got to spend all the steel, all the enderium, all the other blocks to build these five turbines, which is a lot, but not in uh, ocean opolis. <laughs> what is the name of the pack? Seaopolis, my goodness. Oh, I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Go check out the mod pack, Seaopolis 2. It's amazing. It's by Ben. It's on his. Uh, it's on CurseForge. Um, and the FTB launcher. Anyway, so if you have the materials, much better off building turbines. And let's now prove that the 7x7 turbine is the de facto best turbine. Coming back to these, right? We know we want 80 blades. We know we want 37 Enderium. If I take this one, this 5x5, five five, I would be able to put 8 Enderium per level that I go up, right? So to get to 37, oh my gosh, rain, you're pissing me off. Um, to get to 37 blocks of Enderium divided by eight, you've got to have five more levels. So we're looking at a five by five by 27 turbine um, to do that, okay? Um, and just remember that number, 27 tall. At the seven by seven, we can put, you know, uh, 24, blocks per level and so we only need two additional levels to make to be a, have enough to put our 37 in derium all right so that translates to a 7 by 7 by 14 tall here uh, if we're going with a 9 by 9 we could do 48 blocks uh, and so we only need one additional block here or one level to put all 37 in and then the same thing with this 11 by 11 we just need one block so the calculation then becomes surface area because that's how expensive a turbine is, is how many uh, blocks you've got to build, right? So a five by five by 27, the surface area is 590 blocks. A seven by seven by 14 is 490. A nine by nine by 10 is 522. And an 11 by 11 by eight is 594. 
So the seven by seven by 14 turbine is your de facto best turbine to build. It takes two buckets of steam. It produces 1.2 million Fe per tick. And you can power five of those with a seven by seven by five reactor. If you build a bigger reactor, you can power more of them and you're just gonna get the, the multipliers. But this is the turbine that you should aim for. Again, seven by seven by 14, 80, um, uh, whatever they're called. Oh my gosh, I can't. You guys know I forget names of things sometimes. 80 blades, 37 endirium, 1.2 million. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed. Let's find out what happens when we spin these too fast. Which one's spinning the fastest uh, with the least number of blocks? This one here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to disengage the coils, which will let this thing just speed up and speed up. Um, and I'm going to put it up to 2K. If you hold control click, it goes by 10. Let's go. <laughs> it's taking forever. We can do it. We can do it. They do take a while to speed up, and that is one downside of a turbine is if you ever run out of steam and this thing turns off, it takes so much longer to get going again. All right, so we're over 1900. It says speeds over 2000 may fail catastrophically. So let's see what happens. Nope, daytime. No rain. Are we getting an explosion? Is it just gonna disintegrate? What's gonna happen? It's at 2064. Come on. <laughs> 2130. Is it producing more RF? No, oh, well, we are not disengaged, but. Let's put the coils on. Yeah, it's. Now the amount of RF it's doing is going down now. It'll spin faster we don't engage the coils. I just want to see what fail catastrophically means. <laughs> um... Maybe that's just a warning that doesn't actually mean anything? Twenty three hundred. Twenty four. What a liar. I mean, obviously, it's going to tick lag your. CPU just trying to render these spinning so fast, but come on. Explode, explode, explode. <laughs> or just throw shafts like at me, just like pew. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, you don't have to worry about going a little bit over because it's it's a lot. If anything, it's it's not gonna happen, but we'll set, we'll get over to 3K and see. Hmm. <laughs> I know I'm gonna miss it just coming up here to check, but 2800. I assume 27, right, because it's 918. 27 is three times the speed. That, that seems like it would be a logical, like, if we were programming it, would have been like, this is when it explodes. Either that or 3K. But I think we're over 3K now.
All right, well, guys, I'm going to end the video there. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel, uh, go check out my Seopolis 2 playthrough. And uh, if you're on the Seopolis 2 Discord and see anyone asking about turbines and stuff, please point them towards this video. And uh, hopefully that will help people out in knowing exactly what turbine they should build. Uh, I will say that 1.2 million RF tick is not a lot. We need so much to run our SPS um, that we're going to have to build a ton of these to even make that uh, the space that we need. Uh, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.